Well, good morning. I'm going to invite everybody to please stand to your feet. And if you're sitting in the back, why don't we join us here in the front? There's plenty of room on this side and on this side and on the middle. Uh, I'm going to invite you to just come. That way we can be together. And, uh, you know, it's so good to see all of you here this morning on this nice, cool morning. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and with thankful hearts for what he has done for us today. Our Heavenly Father, we just rejoice and we praise you, Father, Lord, because you're a good God, Lord, and we have this opportunity to be in your house to bring honor and glory to you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here, Lord, to study your word, and we just ask you, Lord, that you come and fill every heart this morning, Father. We want to experience your presence, Father, in a great way, and we just ask you, Lord, that you come and, Lord, just allow us to experience you in a great way, Father. Use, Father, Lord, everything that's going to be said today, Father, Lord, to bring honor and glory to you. May your word come forth, Father, Lord, and do the work that it's supposed to do. Fill us with your presence, Lord. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to please join our worship team as we worship the Lord this morning. You are good. You are good. 
are here, you're moving in our midst, as I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, as I worship you, I worship you. Come on. You are here, moving in our midst, and I worship you, yeah, I worship you. As you are here, you're working in this place, as I worship you, and I worship you, yeah, as you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cause you are we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart Cause I worship you I worship you Cause you are here Healing every heart Cause I worship you, yeah I worship you Cause you are here Turning lives around I worship you, I worship you, you are here, yeah, you mending every heart, I worship you, yeah, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God.
Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness is my God. That is who you are. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you
see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to life God bless you, church. I, I'm excited today to know that I'm saved. Amen? How many can raise your hand and say, I'm glad I'm saved? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I wouldn't have it any other way, church. I love God with all my heart. He's, he's Lord of my life. Is he Lord of your life today? Hallelujah. You know, we no longer have to dwell in darkness because he's the light. He comes in and gives us life, that life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I get excited this morning. Somebody get excited in this house this morning. You know, Jesus paid, paid the ultimate price for our sins. We no longer have to be in darkness in our sin any longer. Jesus said, if you fail and you come short, he says, confess your sins to me and I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We don't have to stay bound. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I thank you this morning. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your mercies, for your grace, oh God. Lord, even in Sunday school, I'm reminded, God, of what you did for us, that you so loved us that you sent your son Jesus, Lord, a man with no sin, God. He became the God-man here on this earth so that we can be set free. Oh, Lord, we have no excuses anymore, God. But, Lord, I, it's a privilege to me, Lord, to worship you, to give you praise, Lord, to give you glory, to give you honor, God, for all that you have done, God. Lord, we pray for a continual move of your Holy Spirit, God, in these last days, God, that you open up the blinded eyes of men and women, boys and girls, grandmas and grandpas, to the truth of the gospel, that people everywhere would be saved, oh God. And, Lord, help us as your church to be that salt, to be that light. May we not lose that saltiness in our lives, God, that would make other, others hungry for you, Lord, that would cause them to surrender their lives to you, God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We love you this morning, God. Thank you, Lord, for such great salvation. Thank you for saving us, Lord. I give you praise this morning. And, Father, this morning I want to be mindful, Lord, of those, Lord, in our military today. Lord, I thank you for all the men and women that gave their lives for, you, for our country, Lord. And it's why we have our freedoms today, because many men and women have given their lives for the freedoms that we here have here in the United States of America, Lord God. Father, I pray this morning, God, Lord, I'm still one to believe, God, that you can bring us back to one nation under God, Father. Do not allow evil to prevail, God, in the White House, Lord, in our federal and state governments, oh God. Bring us back, Lord, to the truth of the gospel, God. Bring us back to one nation under God. Father, do not allow the evil one or evil to prevail, Father, in these areas of leadership in our country, God. And, Lord, we pray, if, if so, Lord, that you remove those, Lord, that do not belong in office today, God. Lord, that you would put people in there that are God-fearing, God, that could bring us back to one nation under God, just like our forefathers caused us to be, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, Lord, for your, your presence here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord, towards us, God. Lord, we do li live in a free country, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, freedom would continue to reign, God. And Lord, not the freedom, Lord, to do what is evil, but to freedom to do what is right according to the word of God. Hallelujah. To the written word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you this morning. And Lord, we, we want to pray and remember those who may be sick in body, Lord. Continue to be with Brother Muncie as he
continues to kind of go in and out of the hospital, God. Just be with him, God. Touch his body, Lord. Make him whole, God, once and for all, that he may be able to live to testify of your mighty healing power, God. For you are almighty and all-powerful, God. And your word says that by your stripes we were healed of all sickness and all disease, God. We're going to trust in you for his life, God. Remember Jesus Roldan, God. Remember Melissa Franco, God. We pray for a miracle upon these young uh, brothers and sisters, God. Touch them, oh God. Do not allow the enemy to triumph, oh God. But Lord, give them the opportunity to fully surrender to you, God. Lord, just may you cleanse them of their sins, Lord. Lord, just renew their hearts, Lord. Do that work that only you can do in, in one's life, oh God. And for it all, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory, God. And Lord, remember also those, Lord, who are weak in body, our elderly God today. Lord, remember them, strengthen them, oh God, especially those of the household of faith, oh God. May you strengthen them and give them strength for each new day of life that you give to them, Lord. And for it all, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And all of God's people shouted, praise the Lord, amen. Give them praise this morning. Okay, you may be seated. You know, we're so happy that all of you are here this morning. Uh, may the Lord bless you in a special way. And I know it's good to have uh, Brandon's friend his, and his mom. It's good to have both of you here. And, uh, you know, it's just good to see all of you worshiping the Lord together. Let me just give you a few announcements that I want you to be aware of for this week. Uh, tonight we're having a worship night. So you don't want to stay home. You want to come tonight and just have a time of fellowship and some food and, and some goodies. So I think it's going to be a good time. I encourage you to come, and I know it's going to be a, a great time of celebration just to be able to get together. Amen? And then, you know, two weeks from now, uh, the Lord has been good to Pastor John. 79 years, right, Pastor John? We're going to be celebrating Pastor John's birthday two weeks from tomorrow from today. So right on the very day, we're going to be celebrating, and we're going to have another time of fellowship, so I think it's going to be great, and uh, we, uh, we are thankful for that. If we have any graduates, anybody that is graduating from high school, college, uh, any uh, university or anything, just let us know, and I just let the office know we want to be able to acknowledge you on that area. And also, Sister Susie would like you to be aware that Vacation Bible School is just around the corner. So, you know, it's always a great time, but I know she, it takes a lot of people to put it together, right, Sister Susie? So, ten people. You need at least ten people. So if you're one of those that fill it in your heart to do it, do it, okay? And let's do that. We want to show you this very short video that is in honor of all those, like Brother Gabriel was saying, all the men that have died so that today you and I can experience freedom. Sometimes I volunteered. Sometimes I went because I was told to go. But when the nation called, I answered. In order to serve, I left behind the family, friends, and freedom that so many take for granted. Over time, I used different weapons, a sword, a musket, a bayonet, a rifle, a machine gun. Often, I marched into battle on foot other times, I rode to battle on horseback or in wagons, sometimes on trains, later in tanks or jeeps or Humvees. In early wars, my ships were made of wood and powered by wind. Later, they were made of steel and powered by diesel fuel or the atom. I even took to the air and mastered the sky in planes, helicopters, and jets. The machines of war evolved and changed with the times. But remember that it was always me, the warrior, that had to fight our nation's enemies. I fought at Lexington and Concord as our nation was born. I crossed the Delaware on Christmas Day in 1776. In the Civil War, I fought with my brothers and against my brothers at Gettysburg and Shiloh and Bull Run. I learned that we must never again divide. In World War I, I marched on the Marne and held the line at Bella Wood. The war to end all wars, they called it. I just called it hell. In World War II, I fought everywhere. The beaches of Normandy, the Battle of the Bulge, the hell of Guadalcanal. 
I stood against tyranny and kept darkness from consuming the world. In Korea, I landed at Incheon and broke out of the Chosen Reservoir. They called it the Forgotten War, but I never forgot. In Vietnam, I fought in the Mekong Delta, at Khe Sanh and Hamburger Hill. Some say my country wavered, but I did not waver, ever. In the recent past, I have fought in Iraq and Afghanistan, in Baghdad, Fallujah, and Ramadi, in Kunar, Helmand, and Kandahar. As technology advanced, I used night vision goggles and global positioning systems and drones and lasers and thermal optics, but it was still me, a human being, that did the work. It was me that patrolled up the mountains or across the desert or through the streets. It was me that suffered in merciless heat and bitter cold. It was me that went out night after night to confront our nation's enemies and confront evil face to face. It was me. Remember me. I was a warrior. But also remember that I was not only a warrior. Remember also that I was a son, a brother, a father. I was a daughter, a sister, a mother. I was a person, like you, a real person with hopes and dreams for the future. I wanted to have children. I wanted to see my son score a touchdown or shoot the winning basket. I wanted to walk my daughter down the aisle. I wanted to kiss my wife again. When I told her I would be with her until the end, I meant it. When I told my children I would always be there for them, I meant it. But I gave all that away. All of it. On that distant battlefield, amongst the fear and the fire and the bullets, or in the sky above enemy territory filled with flak, or on the unforgiving sea where we fought against the enemy and against the depths of the abyss, there, in those awful places, I held the line. I did not waver, and I did not hesitate. I, the soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, I stood my ground and sacrificed my life, my future, my hopes, my dreams. I sacrificed everything for you. This Memorial Day, remember me, the fallen warrior. And remember me not for my sake, but for yours. Remember what I sacrificed so you can truly appreciate the incredible treasures you have. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. You have the joys of life, the joys that I gave up so that you can relish in them. A cool wind in the air, the gentle spring grass on your bare feet the warm summer sun on your face, family, friends, and freedom. Never forget where it all came from. It came from sacrifice, the supreme sacrifice. Live a life that honors us, the fallen heroes. Remember us and make every day Memorial Day. Amen. We have so much to be thankful for, for living in this country. You know, sometimes we don't realize the lives that have been lost just so that today you and I can experience this freedom that we have in this country. So let's not take tomorrow for granted, if the and let's continue Peace to Prize honor God to as we look to him. Amen. I want to invite the ushers to please come at this time, and we're going to pick up our offering. And this is just another way that we have, we honor God and we worship God. And uh, we are so thankful that we have the opportunity to give. Brother Joe, would you please lead us in a word of prayer? I'll tell you how. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Father God, for allowing us to have all these liberties and freedoms as our, our brother reminded us of. Thank you for this place that we have here to come to worship and honor you, Father God. And we're going to give our tithes and our offerings, dear Lord, and honor you and worship you and give you all the praise. Bless the gift and the giver, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For so long. <clears throat>
I want us to um, take a moment to listen to this song. If I was, uh, if I could sing like Ray Charles, I would sing it, but I can't. So we're going to listen to him sing America. The second. This is the way I would want to sing it. So while he's singing, Both Iraq. you think of all the young men that gave their lives but they were wars and all over the world for our freedoms. Amen. All right. Listen. peoples in the world, folks. Maybe you haven't traveled much, but if you've been halfway around the world, like, well, not quite, but I've been, I've been around. I've been to several countries. There's no other country like America. There is no other. You can tell Brother Joe just came from Mexico City, <clears throat> and uh, I miss volcanoes blowing up and flights being canceled. I'm sure he's glad to get back to Cucamonga. 
Amen. And so am I. Every time we go out, you know, we know that it's nothing like America. Pray my daughter has a safe return on Tuesday from London. And uh, I know she's going to tell you, she's going to tell me some stories. No other place like America. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful and it brings tears to my eyes. Every time I hear a song like that, America. But I woke up this morning thinking of all the young men from 17 to 19, 20 years old that spilled their blood in so many different countries of the world. I watched a couple of military movies. I watched Porkchop Hill, Korea. I watched the still pot. I'm telling you folks, uh, thank God. We have our own Marine here this morning. Gregory, uh, we're proud of you, buddy. And we thank God for your willingness to be in there and be counted among those few. <laughs> Brother Cat is a Marine veteran too. I'm, I'm an Army veteran myself, and uh, I had the privilege to uh, dedicate the memorial downtown here in Laverne on Magnolia Street. Of all the pastors, <laughs> they could not find a a veteran, so they found me, and uh, they gave me the privilege to bless that place. I made a funny joke. I thought it was funny. But uh, I told him that, uh, you know, I said, and there was there was uh, government people and whatever. It was a place. I said, you know, I thought about wearing my uniform this morning, but nothing fit me <laughs> except my dog tags. <laughs> so I'm wearing them today. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm? Excuse me? I, I still three people to, uh, buy really? Well, you know what I did? I went to the local hardware store and I added a piece. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I was like, a, I was half the size I am today, so. But uh, <clears throat> I, it's, I was telling the story why you wear two tags when you're in the battlefield. You take them off and you put one in between the teeth of the disease and you take the other one and turn it in so you know who it is. But uh, we have rich, rich, rich heritage and a tremendous history of our armed forces around the world. And even today, uh, they stand fast uh, to combat any aggressors, Anyone that would try to harm you and me would be met with resistance. Pray for the people in the Ukraine. They're in the middle of a war, horrible war. People be dying every day. Uh, but then many conflicts can only be settled through war. They shouldn't. They should be able to be done diplomatically, but that's an impossibility. Wars are as old as Methuselah. And uh, even the Lord told us that in the last days, <clears throat> there'll be wars and rumors of wars. And, and so we're there. But we welcome you this Memorial Day. If you turn to Joshua chapter 7, and if you wouldn't mind, Lisa, put in this scripture, I forgot my Bible. I came out in a hurry and I forgot my Bible. So <clears throat> put Joshua 7, verses 2 to 6, and let's read from there. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Evan, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. Let about two or three thousand men go and smite Ai. And make not that all the people labor thither, for they are but few. 
So they went up thither or to the place of the people, about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai slaughtered them about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the even time he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. They were repenting because they knew that something had gone wrong. Well, if there is such a thing as victory for the child of God, then I want you to be aware of this fact, and that is that defeat is also <clears throat> very possible. So this in itself suggests a conflict, and uh, I believe that every child of God, every born-again, spirit-filled Christian needs to recognize that in choosing Christ, you have enlisted in an army. You have enlisted into active duty because we're in a battle. It's wartime. There's no such a thing as a nonviolent Christian when it comes to spiritual matters. There is no such thing as a conscientious objector. Perhaps a better definition would be a, maybe a closet Christian or a silent believer. Some take those uh, names for themselves. And, but uh, above all, there is always, like we that have been in the service, experience, first of all, boot camp. Uh, there is boot camp, but then there's also graduation day. Boot camp is only what we would call basic training. It is never like the real thing. It's all simulated, made believe, designed mainly to develop within you, hopefully, the kind of attitude, the kind of mentality to be able to encounter the real enemy, the real objective, which is combat. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. And Paul said in Romans 14, 5, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So you and I have to really consider these things seriously and uh, pull real guard duty. First Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, like a roving lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. I remember the first time in the Presidio of Monterey when I was sent to pull guard duty with live ammo. It was quite a thing. They gave us a password and they told us if the person did not respond accordingly, we could fire. Well, thank God we didn't kill nobody that night. But uh, it was really something having to confront people. Who goes there? And they had to know them. And they would send people just to test you, see how you were doing guard duty. I hope to, when I go to Europe uh, later on in the year, I hope to visit a, a concentration camp called Dachau. Dachau is in the southern part of Germany, right below Munich. I pulled guard duty there too. And I hope to go there and hopefully we'll bring you some pictures of what really the Nazis did in that area. I want to share this morning briefly uh, what I would consider four things that are a must in order to assure victory and avoid defeat in our Christian walk. Because covetousness leads to defeat. These four things are found right here in these verses. And we read, concerning Joshua's experience after Jericho and Achan, the man who sinned, who was responsible for bringing the defeat at Ai. 
When they went to Jericho and they defeated them, great. But as they were going to Jericho, Achan saw a Babylonish mantle or sarape or something. Uh, and it caught his eyes, so he picked it up. He saw some gold and some silver, and he also took it. They were not supposed to do anything like that. But I believe that these four things that are mentioned here in these verses, uh, we read concerning Judah's experience after Jericho and eight sins which brought the defeat. The first thing is that you must be careful of bad counsel. When you have a real need, don't just go to your comadre. Don't go to the neighborhood. Don't go to get on the phone and try to find sources that will truly speak to your need and help you. And here what happened is that Joshua listened to bad counsel. Self-confidence can fool you. Admiring things, putting your eyes on things, uh, worldliness, and of course the last part would be lust, which leads to covetousness. Remember what happened to Sister Eve in the garden? She was tempted. And when she went to see the fruit, it was there, but she saw more than that. She began to experience a desire for it. So I'll say more about that in a minute, but let's talk first about bad counsel. The Bible says in the multitude of what? Counselors, there is safety. So here's where it all begins oftentimes. We listen to wrong sources. We listen to men instead of God. Our first place to check about something that we need to decide upon or do or, you know, follow up on it or whatever should be God. We should go to the Word of God. We should pray, Lord, sh share, show me, Lord. We want to know, is God in this? What does God have to say about it? I think it's very important. People can tell you anything, right? It's funny, you get one person that's going to a divorce, talks about divorcing, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get all the bad counsel. Hmm? Yeah, all men are this and all men are that and whatever. Oh, you got to help us. You know, one of the problems I think that oftentimes we, we encounter is that we don't like to wait. I think Pastor Walter reminded us a couple of weeks ago uh, about waiting. Have you heard that haste makes waste? Have you heard also that beautiful song that says, in this time, in this time, it makes all things beautiful in this time? With God, it's all about timing. The most important thing is about timing. The Bible tells us, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. It tells us not to lean to our own understanding. But it tells us to acknowledge the Lord. God has been leading and guiding Joshua since uh, he took over from Moses. Then all of a sudden, <clears throat> he's listening to men. First of all, Joshua gets sloppy in his commands <clears throat> because he sends men to view the land. It wasn't supposed to be a, a nature walk. <laughs> they were supposed to have gone and spy the land out <clears throat> and bring back some military advice. Because this was still war, they were not in a picnic. You never want to underestimate the enemy. Say it with me, better, safe, than sorry. You know, you got a pain in your gut, go to the doctors, have them give you a scan or whatever, find out whether it's gas or a tumor. It's for your own good. Many people have found some real eye-openers. 
The life of faith is like the life of the soldier. Always disciplined. The Christian must always remember that the wages of sin is what? <clears throat> Death. Jesus said that the thief, the thief only cometh but to kill, to maim, and destroy. So we must always guard against self-confidence. Remember that great Nazarite by the name of Samson? What a man. What an atlas. What a judge. What a man of God. What a powerful guy. But the admiration of the world, his fame among the Philistines, began to inflate his ego, and he became presumptuous, relying more and more on himself. We cannot afford to interpret presumption for faith. There's a fine line between them. <clears throat> I know that. You see, presumption is dependent much upon how I'm feeling right now. It has been the doom of many careless young persons. The people of Israel had just seen and experienced a great victory. They were flying high on emotion. Be careful of those moments when you're, you know, on that wave of emotion. I said to this young lady, well, how did it happen that you end up getting pregnant like that one day? She goes, well, Pastor, <clears throat> what did she say? The night was moon, and the, and the moon was better. Anyway, she says, you know, and uh, yeah, says you forgot, you got into that car, and before you know it, the windows got fogged up and all that, and you got all, you know, hormones are real, I said, you know. So be careful when you're feeling really good. <clears throat> when you're riding the crest of the wave with the emotion of the year. That's not the time to make decisions. That's not the time. That's what happened to me when I kissed my first man. I was so elated, so filled with the presence of God in the service, so blessed that uh, I, kissed, I kissed him in the cheek. But I never kissed a man in my life, not even my father. Sad to say that, but yeah, I remember that. So be careful when you are high in the spirit, flying high on emotion. On the other hand, faith is very sober and is totally based upon what God has said in his word, regardless of how I feel. Are we led by faith or by feelings? You see, presumption is just an earlier identification of secular humanism because it centers around men. It's not only the idea of taking much for granted, but it also involves supposition and an overstepping of proper boundaries, showing overconfidence, arrogance, and also the idea of taking upon yourself certain liberties without permission or without authority. Secular humanism makes a statement, we don't need to include God, we can do it ourselves. It was no longer the Lord telling them how they were going to take AI, which by the way, AI means a pile of trash. But rather the people thinking of people decided for Joshua and we see that the campaign was really a, a total disaster. They had to run from the enemy. I know 36 guys don't seem like a whole lot, but they were some of their main warriors and they'd perish. And that's how we got to them. How also we can avoid shipwreck by continually trusting in the Lord. 
The Bible states, cursed is everyone who trusted in men. It also says, cursed is every man who trusts in the arm of flesh. So, let me ask you a question. Is it better to obey God or obey men? The third thing that we must be careful about is that that of sympathizing or admiring the world, in other words, putting our eyes on worldliness. Achan saw among the spoils a godly, a goodly Babylonish garment. It's interesting how we read in Genesis 3.16 or 3.6, and when the woman, talking about Eve, saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. The Bible warns us about the lust of the eyes. Brother Kat and I went cruising around the fair Friday for a couple hours. Plenty of stuff to feast your eyes on. How some young people and some women today dare to dress to go out in public, it just, it's just beyond my, my thinking. And some had even had their children and their husbands with them. I said, how can this man allow this woman to come to the fairground wearing that stuff that doesn't even fit her? God help us. I know it sounds funny to us, but people think that, I mean, in the vanity of their mind, they think they're cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, because of the way they carry on. So, worldliness. Babylon is a type of that which is worldly and corrupt. Corrupt in his nature. Nothing good in it. And they can admire that good, good, nice looking. Uh, I was going to bring a sarape to show you. I have some Mexican sarapes. But I was looking at the colors and I go, nah, I don't think so. It looks too much like a rainbow. So I changed my mind on that. <laughs> Some of you are going to get it next week, but all right. When he admired that Babylonish garment, you see that Babylon uh, garment? Babylon represents that which is totally sensual and sinful. It represents heart of the trees and that which is indecent and immoral. If we would look at Revelation 17, 1 and 2, and this is speaking here figuratively about that mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. It's that whole system of corruption that unfolds Morango, Las Vegas, Atlantic City. All that that glitz in the world things is great. All of that is, is really Babylon. The children of Israel in the wilderness had a problem with God's provision. They didn't like his cooking. Because his cooking seemed rather bland out there in the wilderness compared to the pots of leeks and garlics and pork grinds and chicharrones and whatever they ate in Egypt. And that's true. I'm Hispanic and you would not see me eating a bland meal. I carry my Cholula with me all the time. My food has to have spices. It has to have a savory taste to it. But they just could not get over it. They would remember the pots of soup and they would long for the leeks and the onions. You see, Babylon is that which is at the very core of our fallen human nature. You still here? Hold on for just a couple of more minutes. I'm almost done. I said almost. Now, the last thing that we need to guard against in order to avoid defeat is lust, which really becomes covetousness. Covetousness. Lust implies the idea of pleasure 
and playfulness. You've seen the commercials, right? Come to Morongo. Come to whatever, right? And they get all these people in. No ugly ones. No fat out of shape girls, right? Right? Oh no. They gotta be enticing. The guys are well groomed and neat. <laughs> Come and play. Come and have fun. Because it's, it's a, the desire to gratify the desires of the flesh. It's, it's, it's an, uh, an overmastering desire. In other words, lust is experiencing an intensive or intense desire. An emotional flood comes over you. I can't help myself, whatever. In order to triumph over the schemes of the, of the enemy and in order to overcome and escape spiritual defeat, the Christian, am I talking to Christians? The Christian must keep his emotions under the control of the spirit. Love comes from within. Lust comes from within. Therefore, the place to defeat it is by the spirit. Psychology will never do it. It's not a mind over matter thing. Lust is an inner conflict. And James 4.1 says it like this. From where come wars and fightings among you? Don't they come from even your lust that war in your members? So every person is enticed and the devil will try to seduce you according to those things in your life. Lust and covetousness go hand in hand. They work hand in hand to corrupt men and women. 1 Peter 2.11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lust, which war against your soul. There's a battle within you. Your spirit doesn't want to let the... The flesh doesn't want to let the spirit do what it wants to do. And vice versa. There's a conflict, a war within you. And you're the referee. And for that, you need help. That's why the Lord sent the Holy Spirit to help us. You know what Jesus said about something? About a particular problem in Matthew 5, 28, if you're taking notes. He said, but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So what did Achan do? What, what had he done? Well, he looked things over. Then he lusted, and finally he coveted. He just had to have it. It was there. I couldn't help myself. I was overwhelmed. Or whatever. Everybody was doing it. You've heard them, right? You've heard about every argument I'm kind of sort of suggesting here this morning. But we need to guard against that. We need to uh, develop systems within us to combat those things. Because anybody <clears throat> can be taken in a weak moment if we're not careful, right? Remember Brother Peter? Oh, Lord, I'm just not going to go to jail with you. I'll die with you. A little girl came and said, Hey, you're from the barrio. I know you. <laughs> he said, I'm not, man. Get away from me. I don't know you. I don't know how he said it, but he said, Get west. <laughs> you know what? Anyway, and there he folded, right? Thank God later he repented. But a lot of people, Que pasó, mira? You know what I mean? Uh, like, I, I, I got caught in a trap. No, it's just that we need to be aware of these things. And this is the thing that we need to understand as Christians. 
We're discussing that just briefly uh, in our Bible study hour this morning. And uh, if we don't tell people both sides of it, they're liable to make a silly mistake, right? You can't just tell the kid, don't put your hand on the fire. He's going to wonder why, why not? But if you tell him, hey, don't put your hand on the fire, you're going to get burned. And he'll learn. <clears throat> so again, we need to understand what the Word of God is telling us here this morning. Covetousness will lead to defeat. Secular humanism is sinking our country fast, fast. I'm praying real hard and believing God that, that here in the next year, we'll be able to make a turnaround somehow. Our country needs help, folks, God's help. We're, we're, we're going to hell in a breadbasket. We got so many liberal ideas now that I mean, it's war. I saw for the first time this woman painted up, a big white woman. I'm queer and this and the other, just like that, and blah, 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 blah. I go, what is this? Not a transgender, just I'm queer and whatever. And I do this and I do that and I invite you. And I mean, you go, wow, where are we? Sodom and Gomorrah. God's not going to wait too long, folks. Let those people start coming out and think they can, you know, wave their fists at God. God knows exactly how to deal with that. He does, and he will. You bet your money on it. And the Dodgers are this stupid or what? See, you Dodger fans... This one for you. Go ahead and go and kiss, kiss those, kiss those madrecitas. Go ahead. And you beer drinkers, go get your butt light and go on that, whatever you do. No, we don't have beer drinkers here. I think I'm the only beer drinker here. But I drink zero zero though. But you know what? You know what I mean? I mean. We have this junk happening today, right on national TV, right on the open. But like, I thank God I don't drink any of anything, and I hope they all go broke. You know, we used to have one liquor store here in Laverne, you know, 30 years ago. Now we got so many water in the holes, people are having to wait to get a table. What does the Bible tell us? It'll be like, just like Solomon and Gomorrah. It'll be like they eating and drinking and carrying on. So we see it. That's what people do. They get up, what are we gonna eat, what are we gonna drink? I saw a guy in the market, he had a big old 12 pack or 24 pack. I said, hey, you forgot the food, dude. Where's the groceries? He just laughs like, <laughs> big joke. Yeah, that's all they think about. You go to any restaurant like I'm going to do for lunch, you'll see that people go there for food, but they love all oh, those margaritas. Oh, my God. With the salt and the lip. Some of you are licking your lips already. I'm just kidding. Are you hearing me? That's what it is today. It's all there is. Nobody t walks in. You know, you want to drink alcohol? That's a poison for your body. Don't you know it rot your guts and your liver? Nobody talks like that no more. I do now and then when I feel a little bold. I'm, a, I'm an ex-alcoholic. Thank God, God delivered me. I'm not just a dried up alcoholic. I'm a delivered alcoholic. The stuff just as well makes me sick. But I just tell people, you know what? That thing will hurt you. Said they was in la cabeza. Tell them local. You may do things you wouldn't plan to do in. 
because alcohol messes your thinking. Oh, but I only had two beers. Well, two beers is equal to a couple of sets of whiskey. It's the same thing. People lose their with a couple. But you know, God help us. I know we need to love the sinner, but we need to warn him also. And there's no warning today. I was running my Sunday school class. 600 million Catholics going to hell because of the error of their ways. And these preachers in America over here flying around in their private jets, preaching who knows what, giving inspirational talks. And all these people are going to end up in eternity lost because they wouldn't tell them that, hey, Mary can't save you. The church can save you. The Padre can save you. The Pope can save you. They will say that. And I wonder, what, what are these people afraid of? Even Jesus took on the Pharisees. He called them, you generation of vipers, you hypocrites, you this and the other, war unto you. Was gonna. Today, all these preachers, they call themselves men of God with anointing. They ain't got, you know, they don't dare say anything. They're afraid to be thrown in jail or be shot or whatever. Martin Luther Jr. had more guts than they. <clears throat> he gave his life for fighting for civil rights. John F. Kennedy. What was his brother's name? Robert. Robert. He also got shot. Now there's another Kennedy trying to run. But you know, people just, you know, they, 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 preachers today ain't worth, you know, sending them a love offering. They're not doing their job. They're not warning people. Isn't that what the Lord told the prophet? You better warn them. If you don't warn them, he told Ezekiel, their blood I'm going to require at your hands. Well, I'm, I don't want to close on a real negative note here this morning, but I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to take them on. I'm ready to explain to anybody, you know, Lady came to give me a physical exam in my house the other day. She left saved. I mean, I preached to her. I said, you ain't getting away from here, baby. You need to give your heart to Jesus right here. She came up with, oh, when I go this, and I believe that. I mean, you don't believe in nothing. You get to give your heart to the Lord and, and let him change your life. Oh, yeah, Julie's her name. I, I mean, I'm not going to. Folks, time is too short. We're, you know, so anyway, let me not make this any longer. Please stand to your feet. I'm done preaching. I've told you what I wanted to tell you. Well, most of it, some of it. Come back and have fellowship with us. Come and have a good time of worship and praise with us. Come and have a little good time. All right? Tonight, come back at six. I mean, hey, what do you want to stay home and watch reruns? You know, just come and be with us. We'll have a good time. We're going to be praising the Lord, all right? You want to sing a song? Bring it tonight. You want to tell a good joke? Clean? Bring it tonight. Just have a good time. Let's just be us, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you so much this morning for allowing us this time, Lord. It's a precious time, and may we all, God, today become very much aware of what an opportunity we have. What a wonderful privilege to know that Lord, you give us this time so that we can live for you, so we can tell others about you, so we can, Lord, pray for others, and, uh, Lord, direct them to the cross of Jesus. Thank you again for reminding us of the story of Achan, how his covetousness led to defeat, and uh, Joshua learned a great lesson. Help us, Lord, not to confide in men's opinions, but to seek your will and your way for our lives. Thank you, Father, for every life that came out this morning, and I pray that they would do their best to live for you, Lord, to be aware of the, of the things that are out there that the enemy tries to put in our way, <clears throat> Lord, to defeat us, to take us off course. We rebuke him in the name of Jesus, and I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone here this morning. 
that we might be more than conquerors through him who loved us. Thank you again, Father. Help us to commit our ways to you, wait upon you, and we know you'll see us through. We ask these things humbly in the wonderful name of Jesus. And all of God's people said amen and amen. Come on. Hallelujah.